Okay, you guys, welcome. Welcome to Mr. Anderson's Breaking Out of the Matrix, one step at a time. We're going to get right to it with the tinfoil hat wizardry, right? This should, this should be short and sweet, okay? Relatively brief. Straight to the point. 1926 is where this modern concept comes from, right? This whole tinfoil hat thing. And it's Julian Huxley who, like I said, in 1926 published Tissue Culture King, a short story, right? And he published it in the Yale Review, right? And for those of you that know about the eugenics thing and have seen my eugenics series or somebody else's, they're obviously a huge eugenics family, right? So that's a huge red flag right off the bat. This is who's starting this paranoia, this concept. He basically created mass paranoia about mind control and blocking it with tinfoil hats, right? Now they call it aluminum foil because it's made out of aluminum, right? Same difference, tinfoil, people still call it tinfoil. So he created this paranoia by saying that when they were administering these psychic experiments, right, with radiation and whatever, they were using tin pulpits and tin hats to block it from them getting messed up when they were doing it on people, right? So you get a bunch of paranoid people who see that, hear that, read it, whatever you want to call it, and are paranoid, thinking they need tinfoil hat. And you've got people echoing this concept, right? So ironically, now they call people like me who don't trust bastards like the Huxleys, tinfoil hat wearers. When it started out as people trusting people like the Huxleys. That's the basic groundwork, the basic wizardry, right? So, as we all know, there's programming, and it's cliche, but there's programming and pre-programming, right? Pre-programming with events and hoaxes that they pull off, and then just programming in general, television programming, right? Tell lies to your vision. We all know the rhetoric and everything. We know the truth behind TV, right? And of course, you got the U.S. patent uh, 650, was it 6148B2, um, U.S. patent, where they passed the patent in like 2001, 2002, and the documentation goes all the way back to the 50s on how they manipulate people with electromagnetic frequency through the damn TV and media, right? That's another story. Sticking to the point, right, we've got these different programming that they've done right so in 1964 and we're not going to go through all the programming just a few examples right 1964 we've got this god hates kansas book right which they make it to a movie three days later and in this book you've got um scientists or sorry scientists that are being kidnapped by aliens who crashed on the moon and their ship is messed up and they need help fixing their ship and there's a sign one of the scientists has a metal plate in his brain and it blocks the mind control and the mind reading that the aliens are doing right and of course they made that into a movie there's all types of movies right we all know this okay then we move into let's see 2001 with the uh idiots in the machine novel right and in that novel you've got this paranoid character who believes that to block the gamma ray radiation, you need a foil hat, right? And he ends up selling foil hats and making millions of dollars selling foil hats to people in Chicago. 2001 book, right? Then 2002, we've got that lame ass movie, um, Signs, right? And at the time when that movie came out, I didn't even want to see it. And a lot of people I knew were like, you got to see this movie. It's so good. Man, that movie sucked. Even before I understood everything that was going on and the wizardry that takes place on a daily basis in this country and in the world, that movie sucked, man. But anyway, 2002, you've got this signs movie where they're wearing foil on their hat to block the mind reading of the aliens, right? So the theme continues. Okay. 2009 Futurama, the episode into the wild green yonder fry, which is an interesting name fry is freaking out because there's voices being injected into his head somehow through radiation or something and he runs into this dark alley and there's a homeless guy there who gives him a foil hat to block it okay obviously the 
theme continues. So you can see there's obvious wizardry around this, this tinfoil hat thing with associating it with mind reading from aliens and the government and et cetera, right? Which I've never personally met anybody in my life who asserts that the government is doing mind reading or mind controlling, okay? So you've got, we'll, we'll get to the, the basic wizardry in a second, but you got Artemis Fowl, the book series in the same year, 2009, where you've got this centaur character who's very paranoid, right? And he believes that foil hat will block out the mind reading and the psychic attacks, right? And then you've got the HBO series Watchmen in 2019, where you got this Wade Tillman character, who they call Looking Glass, right? And he's got some foil thing going on with his glasses, but he wears a foil line cap to stop the psychic attacks, right? So anyway, back to reality. 1962, Alfred H. Frey, right? Alfred H. Frey discovered that you can actually block radiation-induced auditory effects with um, mesh, wire mesh being placed above the temporal lobe, okay? And I think, what, I, think I should um, get the link to some of his work and put it in the description, actually. So, just because this is not conspiracy theory and all that crap that people talk about. This is just facts, Right? It's a fact that there was that 2009 episode of Futurama. It's a fact that Alfred Frey did this work, okay? Here's some other basic practical facts. Elevators. Excuse me. Elevators. When you're in elevators, it says not to use your cell phones because it'll amplify radiation. That's because the same metals that can block radiation can keep them in and reflect them in. All right? Practical example right there. MRI machines, it's mandatory to put RF shielding with those. Mandatory with MRI machines, okay? People use um, coax cable and USB cables, and those have metal shielding around them to block from interference, okay? This is real-world applications for what I'm talking about. This is not far-fetched to say that there's something called frequencies and bandwidths and that there's ways to block it or reduce it, right? That's not a mystery. Um, the extents can be a mystery, but it's not unknown, right? And of course, people have something that everybody's heard of, a microwave in their house. I don't know why people still have them, but if you notice the metal mesh on the door, that's effectively a Faraday cage, right? Which is blocking the radiation. They even tell pregnant women not to stand in front of microwaves. People with... Um, Electronic devices, right? Because this all comes down to electricity. It's not just an electronic device like a pacemaker. Your your heart has electricity in it. You're an electric being, right? This is why you can get sick from radiation poisoning. This is why people who work with radar get sick, okay? This is not far-fetched stuff. This is practical stuff. Now, into the real wizardry here, 2005. 2005 is the real wizardry where we've got MIT students being grouped together in unison with professors and whoever, right? To actually do experiments on seeing if tinfoil hats can block radiation. They're actually using Reynolds wrap or whatever, aluminum foil. And they made like, th they even made like three different styles. They made like a classical, a fez, and a centurion or something. And interesting that actually they use Fez. We won't get into the bloodshed and Morocco, the secret society and all that, but I just realized that's interesting that they use Fez. Huh. But anyway, they, they're making these different hats and they're testing it, right? And they, what they said was it effectively blocked most radiation frequencies, most frequencies, right? But surprisingly it wouldn't block 2.6 gigahertz and 1.2 gigahertz which is what a lot of cell phones use right it's interesting that they said that and not only that it said surprisingly that it amplified those those um, frequencies so then they actually concluded that the government must have created 
this entire um, tinfoil hat helmet craze, right? Intentionally created it in order to get people to amplify the frequency that was being used on them by the government. So for one, I find that hard to trust with this MIT thing because the director of the national intelligence, his brother is the one who founded the MIT media lab, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's triple wizardry. But even if you don't think it's triple wizardry, what if, even if you believe what they're saying, they're conceding that the government not only uses frequencies, but they would do a disinformation campaign to get you to amplify those frequencies. So what they're saying is almost worse than what I think it is. I think it's reverse psychology, double reverse psychology, right? Bunch of wizardry going on. Many layers to this, but to me, that's what stood out um, with this whole tinfoil hat thing, that 2005 thing, right? So basically you got the Huxleys who got people very paranoid about something that's really not going to hurt them, which is mind control, right? And to put tinfoil hats on. So who are effectively, not literally, because we got the whole 5G thing and RF beanies and et cetera, not in a literal sense, but who are effectively the tinfoil hat wearers of 2020? Scientists now are telling people they need to inject vaccines for an imaginary death, an imaginary scary enemy. They're telling people a so-called virus is going to get them, so they got them wearing masks. They're wearing masks. So the people wearing masks are essentially the same people generally who will get the vaccine. These are the tinfoil hat wearers, effectively, of 2020, right? So, and it's funny because they call people like me who simply just investigate things, who simply in a lot of cases are parents who want to gain discernment and knowledge on what to do in life or not do in life or what to do for their kids or to their kids or not to their kids, right? And just want to do the right thing. They call us conspiracy theorists. That's in, in tinfoil hat wearers. While they wear their mask, calling us a tinfoil hat wearer with their damn tinfoil mask on, right? Effectively metaphorically right so it's just by the way when if you're somebody who uses the word conspiracy theorist or conspiracy theory like in a serious sense like the way it's been pushed on people man that's an instant sign of extreme ignorance and very likely low intelligence right so when somebody says that they're they're pretty much gone dude they're pretty much gone. They really don't even exist. Cause like I've heard people say, like when you try to explain to somebody what an exosome is and, and, and how a virus is dead and et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I, I don't have time to sit around and look at conspiracy theories. That literally doesn't mean anything. It's empty rhetoric. It literally doesn't mean anything. You can be one of those people who sits on your butt and watches CNN. Right? And even if I said that, it still doesn't really mean anything. You're not saying anything when you call people conspiracy theorists. Right? So, basically, you got to... And, and I know there's like the 5G thing. And I did a video on 5G. I don't want to go into the 5G thing. We know it's bad. Right? And we know that the only thing that can block radiation is effectively Faraday cages, right? And people are into the Faraday cage thing, and rightfully so, okay? Because this is harmful stuff. Like I said, I'm not going to get into it because that's a whole na my NASA serpent in their 5G creation. I did a video on already. I don't want to harp on that, right? We all know it's bad. So to test this stuff, forget all the double, triple, quadruple wizardry. Like me personally, I can't wait to get a really good RF meter, a really good meter that can test all types of radiation and right and actually millimeter waves and everything and actually see for myself what's going through walls or not going through walls or tin foil or, or Faraday cages or whatever you want to call it. Right. Is it amplifying it? Is it not amplifying it? 
We don't need to deal with the wizardry. You can kill all the wizardry. Test it yourself. You can wrap your cell phone in um, aluminum foil and have somebody call it. See if it, see if that frequency got through. You can. You're smart enough to do this yourself. You don't need to rely on people with degrees. You don't need to rely on people with licensing, and you don't need a license to think. You can fix the wizardry. You can eliminate the wizardry. Just test it yourself. And that's all I got to say about it. Tinfoil hat. The wizardry of the tinfoil hat. Thank you, guys.